here. Let's let me pump up this little tune. And okay, there we go. Uh, oh, that's some that's piano right there. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's simple, right? Yeah. But it, it's pretty though. It's very very pretty. I like that. Yeah. Um. Does it sound to you like a theme song? I don't know. Because like I said, we're still trying. What you well, it, I, I don't know if that's a loop or not. That's, is, he, is that, is, is he playing that? He's playing. No, he's playing. Yeah. Yeah, he is. It's. I like that. I do too. I like it a lot and it'd be a fine theme song. I just don't know if it feels like a theme song. It feels more like it's a it's a little maybe more operatic than it should be, but for a theme, but I like the song. Well, we you know, we we are uh worthy of orchestral music. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, let me tune, let me tune that out. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh that was another in the a line of choices you have for our theme song so definitely write us and let us know um over the thanksgiving weekend you guys are going to get a lot of episodes at once so <laughs> actually kind of exciting to me because we're just going to drop everything um and uh get get serious about this uh pretty happy thanksgiving jeremy by the way happy thanksgiving uh, happy uh ha happy proclamation of the pope of rome <laughs> <laughs> So this is Science Not Science. I am Jim Bruce. I am Jeremy Paul. And uh, you know what? I think I'd like to talk about Thanksgiving a little bit for a second and uh, lead us into our topic. Uh, okay. Thanksgiving is a weird holiday. Uh, it's a very weird holiday because it, it's all great to be grateful, right? You should be grateful. And it's all great to eat a nice meal with friends. But it's all built on the shoulders of celebrating a group of people, the pilgrims, who are absolute pricks. Yeah, very much so. They were absolute pricks. They were fed. They were fed by uh, people who were uh, native to this country, the indigenous folks, who they subsequently um, murdered and displaced. Interestingly enough, one mm -hmm. of the reasons they were able to do that, one of the reasons they were able to get away with it, and and there's a way that you have to get away with something beyond just society, and that is, so you break a law and you want to get away with breaking a law, but the other way, the other thing you have to do is you have to overcome your own moral quandaries with murder, right? Right. You have to get past your own thing. And one of the ways that people do it is if I had to, now for me, it'd probably be hard just because I just, I like animals, but <laughs> if I had to kill a chicken to eat it, I could, I could, I think I could, I could kill a chicken and eat it. And one of the reasons I could do that is because I know that a chicken is a lower life form and it's easier, uh -huh. it's easy for me to justify and I'm sure there are some vegans and vegetarians who would take issue with that. I respect you. Uh, that's not the argument I'm starting today. Um, but I could do it. <laughs> and the reason that the uh, pilgrims and then subsequently Americans, when we became U the United States of America, the reason why so many people were able to fairly indiscriminately murder um, natives uh, fairly indiscriminately just deny them some basic uh, decency and rights to their own land and rights to uh, where they had already been was because they bought into a premise that uh, which is uh, sometimes called scientific racism is what it's called now mm -hmm. bought into this premise that uh, native folks were a different race and that at the time <laughs> race and species were interchangeable words yeah so it meant that the um I, i'd say the very dark uh blot on on a 
on a discipline that I really like, which is science in general, but there's a big blot on science because the scientific community supported this premise with what is now called pseudoscience. Uh huh. And uh, one of the things that, that would have been said of Jeremy and myself was that Jeremy and myself are two different races. Right. We are, uh, we're, we're different in, and the nicer people would say, well, they're both good, but <laughs> still just racist because what they would then go, well, Jeremy, you know, is uh, got a strong back, they would say. And, uh, oh yeah, and thicker skin. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and and Jim is good at planning. They'd say they'd say Jim was good at planning because they wouldn't want to come right out and be fully racist and go Jim's racist smart. Yeah, but that's what they were saying, and it is an interesting thing that as we talk about what is and what is not science, there's a fairly interesting period of time interesting and sad really where uh the idea that we uh came from that we are just different a different species uh was widely accepted and widely accepted by people you even maybe admire like mm -hmm. oh so like abraham lincoln wasn't necessarily convinced that we were equal he just believed it wasn't fair so he was still great. Right. Don't get me wrong. Abraham Lincoln's still great, but you can't look at his, every, everything he wrote without being a little disappointed. <laughs> right. There's a there's more than a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> you sit there and like, hey, Thomas Jefferson says that we're all created equal, and he had a shit ton of slaves. Uh, so, <laughs> like, uh, that he was raping. Yeah. So. <laughs> and the Thomas Jefferson thing gets so problematic too because problematic is such a soft word to use here. It's yeah, so, so especially up. for that. Yeah, it's so messed up because uh, Sally Hemings, is that her name? Yeah. Famously, people talk about him and his affair with Sally Hemings uh -huh. or that they were lovers or... Uh-huh. But of course, <laughs> you know, you can't like, um, I'm not lovers with say my washing machine. Um, <laughs> right. I own my washing machine and whatever my uh -huh. washing machine does for me. And by the way, I'm not currently confessing to fucking a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> But what I am saying is that if I well, any claims that I make about that would be absurd, obviously on the face of it that a washing machine is not sentient. But to say that he was him, him and Sally Hemings were lovers is such a just you're you're just so hard trying to fix Thomas Jefferson for yourself. Yeah, you're no. yeah you have to make peace with. And accept that the founding fathers were ridiculously complicated and also, in specific instances, legit evil. Yeah. Um, like my my, uh, my favorite thing about, not my favorite thing, but, well, no, it is one of my favorite things, is that uh, you realize, like, not a lot of people realize, they, they know the story about how he wrote, uh, he said he wrote a letter well, it's said that he wrote a letter freeing his slaves after his death, but that's not actually true. Uh, it had to be after his wife died. Uh, so they were still slaves. <laughs> like, like he, he, nobody got freed, really. They were still slaves until his, until his actual white wife died. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, all those movies like that uh, show him in, in positive light, like, no, no, he was a shit human being. Uh, so I have no sympathy for him. No, and and some of the ideas that they had were great, but still, even me, even me, he wouldn't have really wanted me to vote, really, because I'm not a landowner. I don't know yep. land, so he wouldn't really have wanted me to vote. You know, we were we were on the cusp of having a much more 
oppressive society. We, we, in a way, we just got lucky that there were so many disparate people coming up, coming up with it, that there were enough compromises that we ended up with a pretty impressive document. But even so, a document that didn't recognize the humanity of, for, you know, for first, lots of different minorities, no humanity and women, period. Yeah. You know. Let's, let's not uh, skip over the fact that the Declaration of Independence, while also being one of the bravest documents in history, is also one of the most disappointingly bigoted <laughs> documents in history. Yeah. Uh, it's like one of the most cowardly things was written in there. Like, it's basically saying, because the, the king didn't protect us from the Indians, like, fucking cowards. Yeah. Uh, but they don't call them Indians, of course. They call them savages. Yeah. Uh, um, so, like, you're fucking cowards, man. Even the like, Boston Tea Party, if you look at the Boston Tea Party, you're like, oh, they're really sticking it to the English. And giving the credit to the natives. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, we're going to dress up as somebody else, so maybe they'll do something. No, cowards. Yeah, so they'll get the blame, which is just like, oh, that's nah, just, it's disappointing in a way, you know, well, so. But it was to be expected, though. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's disappointing if you, it's disappointing if you're just finding out now because you got a poor history lesson. <laughs> it's disappointing. All of which goes back to this topic that we decided to um, tackle last episode. And last episode was a while ago because I've been through some stuff, boy. Um, and we'll you know, even yeah. talk about that if we want to, but not right away because let's let's get into the meat of it. So um, there was this idea. There's there's were two theories, two very big theories about evolution. One is that all the races uh, evolved from uh, the evolved from the same source. So first of all, when they say different races, literally they meant Jeremy evolved from to this point and he's on a, a branch of the tree of life and Jim's on a branch of the tree of life and you know Jeremy Lynn is on a branch of the <laughs> and, uh, uh, who else uh, uh, Pat Pat Morita is on a different <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> you know they had this idea and and, Maria. yeah <laughs> that we all but we all originated from uh so it's like the sort of adam and eve kind of human being but there was another theory and it was very popular as well and they argued back and forth about what made sense more sense scientifically and that was that Jeremy evolved from a particular set of primates different from the primates I evolved from different from the primates that Pat Morita evolved from right you know what if we can if we can do nothing else but continue to bring up Pat Morita in this episode <laughs> but that's uh, what people thought people thought it and they thought and they used it to just it's People still use it today, but luckily now anybody who still uses it, we at least recognize they're racists. Yeah. Or hillbillies. They're not, they're not scientists anymore. No, there, I was reading uh, uh, like a paper that somebody wrote. I think his name is Boring or something like that. Bo Boron. Yeah. Uh, and he, he postulates that, well, not possibly, he posits that. Uh, Everybody came from the same animal, but it was a an ape with white skin. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really, really, dude, really? You're, you're still you're gonna go with the whole white skin thing, ape? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I I would love to see the white skinned ape and how it managed to survive. Oh, what the way he he wrote it is um he said that uh there were there are a bunch of white apes well uh, apes with fur but their skin is white he makes sure to point out that their skin is white and uh, as they go to Africa because you know they came to Africa they didn't start there uh, as they go to Africa <laughs> these apes with white skin and fur uh like a bunch of them have to adapt 
And so they, 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 because they were getting skin cancer and dying. So that's how they got their melanin because they had to develop skin cancer. They over time got darker and then it became black people. And then white people came from those black people. So he's he's trying to subvert the science that's already existing. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, the funny part is the melanin part, well, that part's accurate in the sense that the reason uh, some people have darker skin is because um, it actually has to do with um, miscarriages. So Mm -hmm. it's if you grow, grow up in, and when I say grow up, I mean generation after generation after generation after generation, right? But if yeah. multi generational grow up in an area where you get a lot, a lot of sunlight, too much absorption of, I think it's vitamin D, um, can lead to uh, increased miscarriages, which of course then in turn leads to a less likelihood of you passing on your genes. Uh, Mm -hmm. Likewise, if you live somewhere where you don't get as much sunlight, like say Ireland or someplace that's like rainy and overcast and kind of shitty, if you you don't get enough, also more miscarriages. So that part that your melanin content is related to the sun, yes, of course it is. Of course. But Oh God, that's just a twisted logic to go. Now we were white first. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. So it, like, I like to read these things because that's the kind of person I am. I, I, I go on white supremacist websites to uh, read whatever shit theories they have just so I can laugh at it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, like I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a terrible person. Uh, but, <laughs> but good to like, know your enemy. It is good to know your enemy. It very much is, and I I I know them very well. Uh, it's fun, but you like I've I've read books like uh, we we start off talking about like the Thanksgiving right, yeah. and you you realize that the settlers weren't settlers. They were they were castoffs. They were they were uh, exiles. Yeah. They got exiled here. They were. This was a prison, another prison colony. They, they, England sent fifty thousand criminals to Georgia. Uh, so, you know, it, this wasn't like, oh, people are religious freedom. No, that's just what they write in the history books. Because you know, winners write the history books. They get to say whatever the fuck they want. But, <laughs> but uh, like, when it comes to, go ahead. I was just gonna say. So that means that let's say there was a, a Native American, uh, Donald Trump. Imagine Donald Trump was a Native American. And when, <laughs> and when the ships of English people showed up, and if that Native American said, well, they're not sending us their best, <laughs> it would be the way, he would actually be accurate in that case. Yeah, there were tribes that thought that way. Uh, but because of like the decimation of, of, the, of the diseases up and down the East Coast, the, like they couldn't fight off like they like they fought off the the uh, the, the what do you call them the Vikings the back in the one thousands. Yeah, they they did all right against the conquistadors, right? No, not at all. No, because uh, <laughs> they didn't. The conquistadors didn't get a foothold here, though, right? Uh, well, they went to Central America. Okay, but didn't some of them come here for a yeah. while? Yeah, but they didn't yeah. stay here. Right, they kept going back and forth. It was more or less not because of the Native Americans, it was more or less because of the other countries that were here as well, like the Italians and and the Port- uh, Portuguese. So yeah, you, you had everybody trying to make a, and the French, I guess, as well. So you had all these people trying to, you know, take take parts of land for themselves and they were fighting each other and while, you know, everybody else was trying to like just avoid the cannibalism and the uh, other shit that was going on. <laughs> so, like, it, was a, it was a shit time back then. Like my, the book that I wrote uh, <laughs> made it so that I learned all this shit. So this is my little area of expertise right now. And it's like, holy shit, you realize all the dumb shit happened back then. Right. But uh, like, as far as the genetics go, um, we've, the, the science of, of humanity, like you've hinted at it, like 
we're all we're we're the same species, right? We're the same we're the same race, yeah. Uh, yeah. but we're not the same ethnicity. It's just skin skin pigmentation. That's all it is. Indeed, but we've, we've tried to uh, deviate from it. It's like uh, when like whenever people will say, well, if uh, if humans evolved from monkeys or, or if humans evolved from chimpanzees or if humans evolved from monkeys, why are they still monkeys? Well, all you got to do is point at a coyote. Like, all right, well, you have a pug. That's a wolf or a coyote right there. Uh, also, we didn't evolve from monkeys. That's the other exactly. thing. We evolved from a common ancestor to the monkeys. Exactly. Uh, like so what I was going to say, too, just to kind of make sure, I want to make sure I hit these bullet points just because it is such a, well, tragically important topic. It shouldn't be important, but it is. Um, yeah. So species and race have been used interchangeably, um, particularly in the 1800s. They are no longer used interchangeably in um, scientific circles. You know, it's understood that we are the same species. Some people still use, use the idea that we have our different races, but when they say different races, they really, what they mean now is they mean what you're talking about. Essentially what they mean is your cultural background and yeah. or, you know why there's different pigmentation. In my opinion though, we would do well to not use the word race at all because yeah. no matter what, because it is so tied to the idea of species, you then have to explain and re-explain, no, 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 we're not, we're not a different species. And you'd be better right. off not using the term race at all because it's all, it's so useless. And a good example of, imagine, imagine in high school, the stoners, let's say the stoners in high school formed their own society. And uh, the metalheads had their own society, right? Right. And let's say the stoners insisted that, no, no, we're a different species than the metalheads. And they, and they argued about it. What would eventually happen is as long as one stone, as there'd be one stoner who realized that they kind of like Led Zeppelin <laughs> and immediately the walls would crumble and they would get assimilated. Now, the same thing has happened with races. It's really, but the thing is, it's super easy for an Irishman to get assimilated into a Germanic tribe to get assimilated in, because we all just kind of look the same sort of dumb, just kind of just pale and weird looking. And <laughs> if you happen to have darker skin, you it's harder, you know, whenever people just talk about this, I'm like, look, we're, we're dumb. We glom on to the easiest detail. So mm -hmm. we look at the darker skin and we can always pick it out in a crowd and everything else becomes second secondary it becomes it becomes beside the point about who the person really is and it's why it's important for people to understand how meaningless it is yeah um and that you know at the perfect example is that if i needed a kidney and jeremy were of a mind to give me a kidney as long as our blood type was the right match and as long as certain other like genetic markers were right he could give me his kidney. I don't, by the way. Um, so don't worry. Don't. <laughs> but he could. A gibbon could not. And uh, right. a, a goose could not. Those, you know, and if... Uh, you a banana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, the reason Jeremy could give me a kidney it would be because luckily for us in that scenario we're the same species and we have interchangeable changeable organs and that just is the truth. And as somebody said one time, I'm trying to remember, I don't remember, it might've been Sam Harris who himself is a problematic jackass, but he's a smart man. <laughs> he said, if you think, if, you, if a Asian man and a white lady get together and they have a baby, what kind of baby do they have? A human baby. That is the kind of baby they have. That is how you know one of the key yeah. tells. One of the key tells that we are uh, the same species. Now, 
Uh, for those of you who don't know, let's talk about this right now. Uh, Jeremy and I, uh, we our noses are a little bit different. Our noses look a little bit different from each other. Uh -huh. uh, they are they're the same, more or less. You know, mine's pretty. Mine, mine just looks like I'm drunk all the time. But this is this red nose. The reason my nose looks like that is because my dad's looked like that. And the reason my dad's looked like that is because his dad's looked a little bit like that. And if you were to line up our noses back, you know, you know, wind the clock back and all you were looking at was noses, that's what my nose would look like because that's a trait I inherited in my family. It's nothing to do with my species. It has to do with the people who fucked prior to me. Just all the people who brought right. us and Jeremy's is the same thing. If you line up Jeremy's nose with his pop's nose. Actually, it's my mom. Or your mom's nose, wherever you happen to get your lovely nose, you line them up. <laughs> back, back, back. It, that's why we have whatever little differences we have. I have, you know, my hairline. Uh, that's a gift from my father, and it's probably the cruelest thing he ever did. <laughs> <laughs> And Jeremy's hairline is uh, likewise uh, from mom and pop, gave him his hair. Mom and pop are also why Jeremy and I wear glasses. Yeah. Jeremy and I, uh, that is something we have in common. We were very likely to end up with vision issues because that's just kind of what happened. Everybody in my family at a certain point in their, my wife, by the way, 2020 vision. And she's a little bit older than I am. Um, I don't her. I knew her mom. Um, her mom was not great, but her mom did not wear glasses. Um, <laughs> and does the fact that I'm wearing glasses and Mary Jo does not wear glasses mean that I uh, married outside of my species? It does not at all. Does not. I did marry outside of your class, though. I was <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you beat me to it this time. <laughs> um, so that was so when we talk about things like uh, the scientific method and what is science and what is not science, it's worthy to remember that um, even really smart scientists and really smart people go awry scientifically. And uh, they make an assumption and they don't necessarily realize it's an assumption. So the scientific consensus at one time, and there were huge tomes written about it. The scientific consensus at one time was there's all these different uh, species uh, related, very closely related. But at that point, you're saying that somebody from Africa versus say somebody from Europe, Europe or somebody from North America or South America are different in the same way that we are different from say Gibbons and Bonobos. And unfortunately that was an assumption being made. That was a, you know, uh, there were assumptions about um, whether or not somebody was capable of learning things, whether somebody was capable of being civilized and really remember that civilized just meant we murder but we also take a break for tea that's what civilized was you know <laughs> right civilized was the i mean it's <laughs> funny what people think of civilization anyway civilization civilized is the clothing is the manner of speaking but it isn't you know kindness that's never been the mark of civilization why well, the ugliness yeah. of say, I, I always, I find it not only ugly, but say we're both in comedy, find it so comedically lazy too, when people will make fun of say accents. Uh, I used to work, uh -huh. I've worked in a restaurant. I think you've had a number of shitty jobs. You've probably worked in a restaurant at some point, right? Uh, no, actually I haven't worked at a restaurant yet. Uh, don't. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I worked in the kitchen because nobody wants to see me walk into their table with food. So I was behind the scenes. Um, and I would be one of the few. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot McDonald's. 
Oh yeah, that counts because that's shitty and you stink when you go home. Yeah. Yeah. You, you smell like grease and sorrow. Uh huh. Um, but I worked in the kitchen and I was a line cook and uh, I at the restaurant I worked at. Um, I was one of the few white guys who worked in the kitchen. It just happened to be the case that I was one of the few white guys. Uh, most of the people I worked with were Hispanic. Uh, and then there were a couple of black guys who worked at my restaurant. And there were some waitresses that made fun of the Mexican cooks because of their accent. Because uh, one of them was from, uh, one of them was, you know, first generation from Mexico, making a better life. He was a, he, he was a citizen, but right he wasn't who cares i just don't care but but the point but i just don't want anybody calling anybody on me um he uh, had a pretty thick accent and she would make fun of his accent and act like he was dumb and then one day i just went off on her and i was like you know he speaks spanish perfectly and he speaks english how many fucking languages do you speak (laughs) and i was right i had called her out properly because she spoke one she spoke english yeah, and, and probably I, half ass spoke that. I was gonna say she spoke f- fine, but not impressive. Not impressive. right. And if uh, if you study Spanish or other languages, it's not just that they it, they don't substitute words, yeah. <laughs> sentence structure, and everything else. So the intelligence that it takes to pick up a second language is and. Uh, but those are some of those cultural biases that we introduce that we think that to us make sense that don't even feel like a bias, like making fun of an Asian accent when you're like, you know, the yeah. appearance of the L in Mandarin, I don't think it makes an appearance. So whenever anybody who grew up speaking Mandarin or whatever, or Chinese or whatever manages to pick up English, I'm like, well, I'm never going to speak Mandarin. I'll tell you that much. I've tried. <laughs> I have tried. I know maybe three sentences. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a tough language. I've tried. I went in college. I took a language and I was like, I am going to learn to speak Mandarin. And here's what I learned, Jeremy. I learned that I could still do all right in college despite getting an F in that class. <laughs> That's what I learned. I, and I tried, it wouldn't go into my brain. It just wouldn't do it. I wasn't, I mean, yeah, I because English is a tough, English is a way different language than every other language that exists. Cause it's, in terms of every other language with the exception, of like three or like two or three different languages, English is backwards. It's completely backwards. Yeah. Do you know Graham Elwood? You know the comic Graham Elwood, right? Uh, I've heard of him. Funny dude, he uh, does a lot of political comedy now and good for him. I don't want to hear about it because I'm done with politics for a while, <laughs> but it's fine. I mean, he yeah. does a good job. he's a very funny dude. He, for some damn reason, and I think it's partly because when he was a kid, they traveled a lot. If he puts his mind to it, he can just pick up a language pretty quick if he puts his mind to it. And he's yeah. also really good with directions and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Like if I was, if one of my ancestors, I'm going to just say that my ancestors, if my ancestors left, ancient, ancient ancestors left Africa and, and uh, on the bridge, the land bridge when it existed and ended up in another continent, they did it by accident. They were not trying to go there. <laughs> Wherever they ended up, it was not. Right. Um, so you, you see that kind of stuff still persists. Like you see it in people today. Um, you're seeing it right now. And fortunately in our country with uh, you, you see, of course, whole blocks of black voters, Republicans are still actively trying to disenfranchise them from an election that's already taken place. Yeah. That's a, that's, it's always fun to watch people uh, uh, try to bring back the fifties. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's like oh man you you really love jim crow didn't you yeah. all right yeah, you're like i was okay with you bringing back leather jackets and malted shakes <laughs> just that part not not the other just horrible um and they still the only i guess the only good thing is is 
the only good thing about the American racist wound is that every now and then you really got to pick the scab off and go, look, the wound's still there. We haven't actually treated it. Yeah. Like it's, there's still a festering infection that uh, we, we just yeah. ignore. It's like, we're, we're going to right. I think right now is when the sepsis is kicking in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like that's, what's been happening the last, four years the sepsis has kicked in We're like hold on wait we elected a game show host fuck uh <laughs> now you know who we should learn a lesson from i will tell you who we need to learn our lesson from uh so the nazis obviously were very evil people um but they're related to our topic in in germany because they yeah. believed uh they believed in this scientific racism they believed they were that there are different races. They believed in a superior race, in this case, the Germans. Uh, they definitely believed they were not, I'll just go on record as saying they weren't fans of the Jews. They don't like right. it. Just uh, a yeah. sm small, small differences, yeah. like petty, small petty differences they had. Yeah. yeah they were, uh, yeah, not, not big fans of my people. <laughs> uh, they did some horrible stuff, and we had World War II, mm -hmm. and the holocaust and so many people died and it was very very tragic but when germany rebuilt here's what germany didn't do they didn't say ah it was a long time ago quit talking about it they didn't do that right they didn't put up statues for effective german generals and say this guy's a hero because he was good at being a general they didn't do that the uh, they left Dachau intact. In they leave. They left the concentration camps intact. The part of the history they keep intact is the part that hurts. They did not run away from it. Rather, they ad they're fully admitted that this is our shared history. In the United States, there's this habit we have as Americans to go. Well, we do two things. One, we go, I'm so proud of my father in World War II. He was a great guy. He fought for World War II. I share his pride. Oh, slavery, that wasn't me. That was them. <laughs> and you can't do that. You, you can't have any of your history unless you have all of it. Yeah. Because, you're, because if you take just the good parts of your history then that's a false narrative anyway. That isn't even history. That's, that's just, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's the flight of the Valkyries. That's just you telling what. So one of the things yeah. we should do, you know, when people talk about like getting rid of statues of Confederate soldiers, yes, get rid of them partly because they're poorly constructed statues anyway. Very much so. Um, one there Half of them were built in the 50s anyway. So Yeah. One of my favorite parts about the um, Confederate statues is some of them are identical to the statues made for the, um, the other side, the um, Union soldiers, just mm -hmm. different. <laughs> yeah. So, so they're not even like original artwork. But if you were to have a display that showed the trading block, if you were to have a display that showed the horror of humanity, yes, do that. Go to a place and make people cry and think. Because the Holocaust Museum, have you ever been to the Holocaust Museum? No, I have not. Yeah, it's a day. It's a day. It'll, it'll, it'll take a lot out of you. It'll take a lot out of you. And uh, No doubt. <laughs> But it's a good thing. It takes a lot out of you, but it gives a lot back to you in that you walk out of there understanding a piece of history um, in a way that, you know, just displays of shoes is just horrible, just piles of shoes. Yeah. Um, and, that, and honestly, that's how slavery should be taught. It should be like, look, this is a whip and this is what our ugly country did rather than a guy in a horse yeah yeah the way the civil war is taught is like man fucking people like to ride horseback 
That's the fucking way. You know, the fact that they, uh, the fact that they, they cram it all into February was always my, uh, was always my pet peeve. Like I hated black history month for a long time because they never taught it correctly. No, nope. especially in Illinois. They never taught it correctly. They didn't teach much correctly at all, actually. But uh, that's but that's the way education worked in the eighties. Uh, they they really you had to learn everything on your own. Uh, like like the, there's a joke of mine you can find it online where I discuss uh, like Black History Month, and I, I mention it because the truth it's they they taught three people. They they taught uh, Christmas addicts. They taught Martin Luther King. Then they taught old John Henry. I kid you not. I remember that joke. Uh, yeah, but it's the truth. They taught they taught a fictional character for Black History Month. I was like, really? That's that's the that's the shit you're gonna stick. You you have no other. You didn't no Emmett Till, no no uh, Sojourner Truth, no no Harry. Like they barely grazed over Harriet Tubman. They just like they 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 taught nothing. Of Tuskegee, they they took they took they taught nothing. Yeah. So I hated Black History Month. Like they they brought up the cotton gin, like oh cotton gin, like but cotton gin was invented in India like eight hundred years before that. So like what's the what's the point? <laughs> like, right. They don't they don't teach Emmett Till and and that's you know, the should, yeah. There's a lot of things that they don't teach that they should be teaching. And it's it's poor teaching. Like the Civil War uh, is the big thing, and they spend two days on it. Yeah. Like you're you're happy with those two days, and you well, know how they teach the two days? They show the movie Glory. <laughs> <laughs> so you watch Matthew Broderick for two days. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend, by the way, to anybody look up that bit by Jeremy Paul. It's a really funny bit. Uh, I had the good pleasure of seeing him perform it live when he, I saw you perform that live when you were first developing the bit a number of years ago. So. Yeah, that was uh, like 12 years ago. I started, no, actually that was 2004, five. I think I started yeah, doing it. Good bit. Oh. It's a really good bit. Now here's what I'll say. So they teach uh, John Henry, fictional guy, right? Yeah. Martin Luther King, but they also teach Martin Luther King fictional guy. Yeah. Right? Because Martin Luther King, it dawned on me um, not that long ago. I guess within the last 10 years, I was like, whenever they teach him, they try to make him a guy who he just wanted us to all get along and he didn't want no trouble. Right. Which is, he did want us to get along, sure, but he was all about trouble. Yeah, like, and they they teach just the speech. They teach the one speech. They don't teach the other speeches. Just the one speech. <laughs> they don't teach anything about. Uh, they they teach the bus boycott and the one speech, and then he got shot. Uh, so that's all you know from schools. Yeah, you don't uh, you don't learn that the FBI targeted him. You right. don't learn that. Uh, when he talked about appeasement, you don't learn about all the white liberals of his day who were like, I agree with your goals, but not with your methods. Uh huh. Because it has ever always been that the people in charge want to also set the rules for uh, how you protest. Yeah. They, uh, they really want to structure it in a way that they come out on, on top. Yeah. <laughs> so, you yeah. know. March, but can you not make this inconvenient? Yeah, like the fact that uh, it, it took what eight days after he got assassinated, and that was like seven or eight days of riots, and that's when they decided, oh, we'll give you civil rights. Uh, <laughs> so like, oh, that's 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 what it takes, right? And now we're what we're we're six or seven months into riots, yeah. uh, <laughs> and. You know, that's that's what it takes. Yeah. So. And arguments against reparations. The thing about arguments against reparations, look, I don't know how you would do reparations. I'm not smart enough to put together the actual, say, bill. But here's what I will say. 
reparations wouldn't be necessary if you had done it right after the Civil War when you promised to. If you had just done it then. Yeah. And when you talk about this festering wound, it's just like you understand that it just it's not going to just go away. At some point, you have to contend with the wound and then it can be fine. One of the things that Dr. King used to say that would make me cry sometimes um, is when he would talk about uh, racism, he would talk about white folks and he would say that they had a sickness. And I always thought that was so fucking kind to call it a sickness. Because if you say that somebody has a sickness, what you're saying is they could be made well. To call it a sickness, yeah, it's treatable. you're saying that this is something that can be treated. You know, he didn't call it evil, though it certainly is evil. He certainly, he didn't call it, he, you know, he said that they have this, he recognized that you know, bound together as we are as human beings, that this is a malady that we have to somehow find a cure for together. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think science is a, is a good, bringing it back around, I think science is a good place to go because science inevitably was going to go away from scientific racism because it doesn't stand up to scrutiny in the lab. It doesn't stand up to scrutiny in sociological experiments it doesn't yeah. it doesn't it doesn't stand up to scrutiny in the face of statistical analysis it as long as you can get to the point of actually applying the scientific method it will eventually even if you yourself are fucked in the head and you have some garbage thinking bias the method itself if you actually just follow the method Feynman would often say that like he would say that what you one of the things you just got to figure out what bias are you bringing to the table that's the problem yeah why he's such an admired scientist and why so few people know him is because he just he just stuck to the method just that's it just you know if it works you're supposed to keep working it yeah. <laughs> and what are and when you write your conclusions are your conclusions derived from the evidence and from or did you introduce some part of your bias which happened with you know uh, a good example is the iq test this is a, a <laughs> iq test the yeah. iq test is funny remember as we were i know when i was a kid and i'm sure when you were a kid that was an interesting test because it felt like a scientific way to see how smart you were and if you did well on it you felt great and i always did okay because i'm pretty good at word problems and you know, puzzles and things. Um, it, but as it turns out, the IQ test itself is often uh, very biased and very racist. And, uh -huh. and the ways in which it's racist aren't obvious to people right away because it's, it's like, as a silly example, you ask a person, uh, you and your friend go horseback riding in the countryside. And then that's the beginning. And if the person being asked the question comes from a background where the premise of going horseback riding isn't a luxury they could have had, they're probably not going to get the question right. And right. Because you fucking ask them a question that's culturally irrelevant to them and made an assumption about their intelligence. You know, it, it'd be the same uh -huh. thing as if I was like, I was like, Jeremy, I'm going to test your IQ. And I ask um, all the questions in Latin. <laughs> uh, that's I actually I actually kind of kind of speak Latin. Oh well, okay. <laughs> so I ask them all. In <laughs> I ask them all in Mandarin, and then I'm Mandarin, like, oh, you can get me. Yeah, that's like, boy, I'm, I'm, Jeremy's not that smart. He didn't get any of these questions that I asked in a le in a language he doesn't know. But right. the cultural language too, you know, when we talk about. You know, pop culture is a good example. You know, we're yeah. having a conversation in my, you know, and I, I reference a bunch of Billy Joel, and you don't have to <laughs> grow up in the '70s like me and be a big fan of Billy Joel. Well, then nothing. It just you're, you don't have a hook into what I'm trying to tell you. Right. If it's not a uh, Uptown Girl or uh, or the other one, the, the Tiny Dancer, 
I wouldn't know anything about it. Tiny Dancer is not Billy Joel, my friend. See, told you. Don't know anything about it. <laughs> you, you, uh, it's, it's an understandable mistake if you didn't don't know who they are because that's Elton John. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, and right away you're like, well, we got to put Jeremy in a special class because he thinks Tiny Dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that's a good ex- a good example is that IQ test because you administer that IQ test to kids and you immediately, first of all, you immediately tell the kid. That's why the IQ test is dangerous too because you administer the test to kids and if the kid doesn't happen to do well and kids listen to adults, there's, you know, you're wired to. You actually evolved to listen to adults because it's how we survive is, yeah. is to listen to your elders because you got to count on them to tell you how to get fed. Um, if you listen to them about your IQ, you are g- kind of going to lock into, oh, I guess I'm not that smart. And you will follow a road that confirms what you were told because we like the world to make sense. We like the world, we like it, we like the world to exist where we can trust our authorities, uh, sometimes to our individual detriment. Yeah. Yeah, the IQ test. I'd forgotten about that. I don't, man. I, you know what I'm really impressed by? What? We're staying on topic. <laughs> uh, yeah, thought- we are for the most part. Like we we haven't even touched on the fact that like like the the bullshit science of uh that there's you've seen have you seen Bill Burr's uh, joke about him uh like of him watching. Uh, sportscasters get fired for saying racist things on there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they they all, I, I think the joke is like they keep talking about the quick t- quick twitch. Like we haven't even touched on that part. Of, like people's just being their their bad science has led to people losing their jobs. Yeah, they keep repeating these racist things. Not even racist. These these bigoted things of. Yeah, of the bullshit science that that has been disproven over and over again. That's just false science in the first place. Yeah, the, yeah, they, you know, they would breed the slaves to be bigger and stronger. And yeah, that <laughs> was uh, Jimmy the Greek or something. Yeah, you know what's the, funny too? Jimmy the Greek got fired for being racist. They called him Jimmy the Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Howard Cosell do some similar like, oh, the, the little monkey? Was. <laughs> uh, yes you <laughs> can run and now here's what's interesting here's what's interesting like analyzing howard cosell if if you could just call anybody who was fast and say he's fast like a monkey let's say you could do that uh-huh. and, you could say it, and you would say it about a white guy and you would say it about an African guy or an Asian guy, you only meant that they were fast, right? You were drawing an analogy like he runs like a horse, for example. No one would be, be, you know, he's like a horse, man. He just keeps on going. Nobody would be offended by that because we haven't haven't yet ruined comparing (laughs) things to horses. Right. The funny thing to me is Howard Cosell saying that is more or less screwed because other idiots ruined the analogy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, because first like there, of all, there was a... go, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was just... I was, what I was going to say was <laughs> we're having a lag here. This is hilarious. Okay, you go. Okay, what I was going to say is there was also a, a coach uh, I, I, I think Bill Burr touched on this as well, but he was like the guy. The guy was on TV, and he, he said that uh, the reason why we lost because we need more black guys on our team, <laughs> so we have no black guys. I love that bit. That's a great bit. Yeah, yeah. Bill Burr is a funny dude. It's a funny yeah. dude. Yeah, I was just gonna say that if you could compare all of us to monkeys, as long as you were just saying we're all primates, right? Right. You could do that. That's not what they're doing. Not at all. They're, uh, you know, it's that ingrained racism or ethnocentrism that 
we can't get out of. Yeah. It's just like learning the word racism. Like you, we, I've been saying we, we've, we've all been saying racism so long that we just refuse to say the correct word. We're just taught that way, and it's indoctrinated into us. And uh, that's the perfect, the perfect uh, metaphor for uh, our species as a whole. Indeed. And, you know, it is one of the reasons why, by the way, just related, it would be great if more people took a little time to, to look at, say, the human genome and, and look at what's been discovered and yeah. what people have figured out. Because the cool part is when you get down to the genome, you go, oh, yeah, there ain't any difference. There just isn't. There's right. People. And you'll see, you know, just that it's the same you know messy mix it's just the, it's just it's just human dna is just human dna you get down to the genome it's just this windy little thing and it um and it's different and the ways in which it's different from other species is identical human to human to human uh-huh it just that would be neat be neat for, that's why man scientific literacy that's one of the values that it can have because um you'll but you'll still have people having certain cultural bigotries that are interesting oh very much so and i'll, yeah. I'll i'm going to bring them up because i find i brought them up earlier so uh you know who sam harris is right i've heard the name of more than a few times i haven't read any of his work okay so sam harris is a very smart man he uh is his field of expertise is the uh, human brain. A very smart man. He's not a physicist. He's a very smart man. Um, but he has a very clumsy way of expressing his concerns over Islam. Okay. And his clumsy way of... He's very clumsy and he doesn't... I don't think he means to be. And I don't think he means to be racist it's interesting though because he's been accused of being racist towards muslims and mm -hmm. then he goes muslims aren't a race to which i want to say right but no one is but racism exists so yeah. not really making a point what what you've done is if if we all understand that racism is a is a construct uh -huh. Or that first, no, that race is a construct, that it's not a biologically useful distinction. We understand yes. that race is not a biologically useful distinction in understanding human beings. And it's not. It doesn't give you anything in a lab to understanding human beings. It really just doesn't. So if you understand that, and that racism springs from this artificial thing, then the defense of like, Muslims aren't a race isn't a defense. Yeah, Jews aren't a race either, but yeah. you can damn well be sure they sure they've been treated as one, and you can damn well be sure that the fiction of their difference uh, has led to some really unpleasant things. But Sam Harris is a good example because he's a very smart man, he's mm -hmm. a good scientist, and yet a cultural bias he has leads him to say peculiar things. The sa same thing with um. Who's the evolutionary bi uh, biologist that people like to quote all the time? Who's a big atheist? What Dawkins? Yeah, Richard Dawkins is a fine man. He's a very smart man. Every now and then he'll say something. You're like, ah, you, you must know that this is just your bias, right, Richard Dawkins? Come on. Yeah, it's just like Hitchens. Hitchens was the same way. Yeah, absolutely. Hitch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Hitchens was a Hitchens was an interesting fellow too because. You would find yourselves at one point, you'd be going, Hitchens is right, and you could be talking, arguing with somebody, and the other person would go, Hitchens is wrong, and then you'd find yourself in a different argument where they were like, Hitchens is right, and you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, but I still could listen to him talk all day long because he was just so clever. Yeah. Just like, but, yeah. Like, there, there's... Speaking of the Sam Harris uh, bias, uh, like most of the, I, this goes back to our discussion on religion, I guess, but 
there's there's a sect like there's different sects of Islam that uh, that believe different things that relate and like the what I'm going to bring up is the five percenters. I don't know if you know anything about the five percent nation. No. All right. So the five percenters is uh, they're a sect of Islam of, where they believe only five percent of the nation uh, of the world knows the truth about uh, about all of life, and it is their job to speak that truth uh, to everybody. But they have they have uh, their own uh, I guess way of looking at history, where. Uh, white people are the devils, plain and simple. Uh, but they go on. There's a there's a rapper. I'm a huge fan of this rapper. But uh, he 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 put out a song. His name's Razkaz. He put out a song called "Nature of the Threat" back in '96, uh, I believe, on an album called "Soul on Ice." Okay. Uh, it is basically okay. the five percent nation, like everything that they've taught him, taught him while he was in jail, I guess. Uh, and he made it into a, a seven and a half minute song about the history of white people. And if you go through it, a lot of the stuff that like historical is accurate, but it's still coming from a racist bent or, or a bigoted bent. Yeah. And you're sitting there like, oh, well, like, yeah, you're, you're correct about black people expelling white people from their tribes, in Africa because of albinism. That's correct. But they're not mutants. <laughs> they weren't mutants, man. They were, it's just a, a genetic mutation. That's all it was. That's all albinism was. But apparently that albinism got you kicked out of the tribe. And that made you, I guess, less. And that's what the 5% is believed, that they're less because they were offshoots of Black people. Like, well, that's... That's one way of uh, being incorrect, but sure, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I, if anybody's interested, go ahead and look up the song, uh, do some fact checking. You're gonna find that while bigoted, a lot of stuff is correct. There's some some things that are wrong, obviously, uh, yeah. but historically, a lot of it's accurate. Now, here, here's a thing that you've brought up that's that's lovely. It's lovely that you said that because so what you're what you're talking about is the the song that tells some true things that happened, but then there's a conclusion, and that is where people go wrong. Yeah, time in and putting aside issues of race, just well, pure logic. One of the biggest errors people make in their thinking constantly is they'll take a particular fact and draw a conclusion that is not merited by the fact. So the fact can be true. You yeah. can, foundationally, you can th say that a certain thing is, the one of the sillier ones, of course, is um, just if, you know, it starts raining, you know, it, it starts raining and, you know, your uncle has a heart attack and it rained first, and then your uncle had a heart attack. And then let's say it rains again, and your grandma had a heart attack. And it, and it does that a couple times. And then you conclude that when it rains, rain causes heart attacks. <laughs> That's what people do. They do it in much more, uh -huh. much more sophisticated ways. But particularly, you know, in, in the lab, people go awry in that way. They draw conclusions. It's uh -huh. like, it's why you have, oh, I wonder what that was. Uh, it's why you have peer reviewed papers because you write a whole paper and the whole paper could be garbage. It can be garbage because your data was incomplete. It could be garbage for a lot of reasons. One of the reasons it can be garbage is people like, you know, you're thinking that this led to this and you're ignoring, you know, you're, you're assuming a causality that isn't there. And then yeah. you're ignoring so many other possibilities. Ah, oh, that's funny you brought up that song because I'd actually see, man. Somehow we're fucking staying on topic. <laughs> well, it's a it's a it's a topic that again I'm we we both believe in. Yeah, like I've believed in all the topics so far, but it's 
this is, I guess, when we uh, were more adamant about. Well, yeah, it's easier to talk about this than glass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the glass one, though. No, I like that episode a lot. I hope you yeah. it. Well, I've liked it, too, because I liked it, too. But, but it's just easier to talk about this because it's so... And it's germane, unfortunately. Yes. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, yeah. It's evergreen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, uh, it's not, it's not just, there's so many like moments of bigotry. Yeah. Uh, that humans have to deal with because that's how humans behave. Uh, we're bigoted towards each and everything that exists on this planet. And, you know... It, and and from an evolutionary standpoint, it's been useful to be bigoted. Yeah. Any of those behaviors, even the ugly ones, one of the sad... Sad is a, a judgment. Well, forget the word sad. But one of the just... I'll go ahead and say bitter, but one of the bitter truths is that a lot of even some unpleasant behavior uh, because it ended up being useful. Uh -huh. uh, the problem with evolution is that uh, evolution never happens like it does in the X-Men. It never happens quick and fast and, enter and entertaining. It is, uh, so it is, oh, it happens over hundreds and hundreds of generations. Um, uh -huh. Because of that, because of that limitation, one of the things that will make a species go out of uh, go extinct, for example, is that because it takes so long, a rapid change to your environment will just destroy a species because the species is not going to rapidly change to adapt to this to the environment. Uh, tying it back into us as a human species, we're getting to the point where uh, we better learn to overcome that what used to be useful because you know, well, people have nukes now and people have, <laughs> you know, and, and once that happens, you realize, oh, well, now's the time when that sort of tribalism doesn't really work. You know, we may have to go towards socialism. We may, uh, or some other form of government that doesn't rely on absolute individualism that doesn't work if you have limited resources. The more limited your resources are, the less productive it is to have that hardy cowboy out there because that cowboy is the one who's fucking wasting all the resources. Yeah, you know, you gotta share that, that can of beans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are getting to the point where it's like, well, now look, we have, an, now our resource, you figure an, a, one way to look at it, just, it occurred to me is, um, when our species was struggling to survive, it was about finding resources or taking over resources and, and, you know, creating a sustainable society that way. Now, if you think about it, the resources are each other. Yeah. The resource isn't necessarily just the water supply anymore. Now the resource is each other so that we, oh, um, my wife is going to come say hello. Oh, okay. Hi. What are you doing? On my podcast. Are you recording right now? Yeah. Oh. She asked for a recording. Oh. <laughs> Come say hello. No, no, I'm in my night now. Okay, that's my wife, by the way. Hi. Hello. Um, hey, um dogs. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. okay. Bye. That was the wife, everybody. <laughs> we couldn't see her. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's letting me know that it's almost time for me to walk and feed my dog, so... Oh, fine, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was uh -huh. going to say that our resource has progressively become more that what we need to do is view each other as our collective resource. Uh, yeah. you know, our collective intelligence is what's going to get us by. It's not rugged individualism. The best, a friend of mine made this point, uh, and it, it's a silly way to make the point, but it's true. Uh, you take the movie Iron Man. And Iron Man has this suit, right? This amazing suit. In real life, the suit could never be made by one guy. Yeah. That's not how a suit like that gets made. We like the idea because we like individualism. We like it as a concept. 
but only a really functional socialist world could make a real Iron Man suit. Only like a, a government that actually worked for the people and marshaled resources that marshaled the engineering necessary, that the metallurgy necessary, the chemistry necessary, that host of things that would be necessary that one dude, forget the cave part, but even one dude in a really well-equipped lab is never making an Iron Man suit. That would never happen. Have you, have you seen the guy online that does it? Oh, hey, hey, yeah, I'm going to say it's not quite as impressive as Tony Stark's, yeah. Yeah, but it, I think it was him and, like, four other dudes. Yeah. So minimum yeah. five people. <laughs> it's going to take a minimum five people to make even a rudimentary uh, Iron Man suit. Using, and yes, you're right, using technology and discoveries that came before, not whole cloth. Yeah. Not like, because because of Tony Stark, of course, makes an Iron Man suit out of well, I mean the hip, the primary ingredient in that suit was metal and magic. <laughs> yeah, um, like uh, like the arc reactor. That's that's a whole new thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the Marvel movies are filled with um, I don't know what you'd call them. They're they're filled with plot devices that you don't want to think about too much because they upend the movie if you do. So for example, the arc reactor is like, so he doesn't go and solve the energy crisis? <laughs> oh, no, he does. If you remember, he did that in part two. Yeah, uh, that, that movie op opens with him uh, uh, make, giving everybody in New York free sustainable energy. Is that, that happened in number two? Oh, wow. Yeah, he, he, uh, he's underwater, uh, like, like fusing an arc reactor to a pipeline. Oh, okay. That's well, that's how the movie starts, and they okay. Well, then they did it. That's good. That's good. All right, so here <laughs> we need to walk my dog. So, Jeremy, what uh -huh. are we going to talk about next time? I have a couple ideas, that's... but I want to ask you, what do you want to talk about next time? Well, I've been going through history recently, of course. Uh, so I would say. As far as the science goes, the I'd say the science of finance. Done. Done. That's actually a pretty, that's a thick subject. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, I've been, a, you know what? And we alluded to it. Yeah. We brought up social, about maybe, we brought up socialism. So that's great. Uh -huh. we're, we're maintaining our streak <laughs> related to something we talked about in the episode. Uh -huh. So, I, so the to wrap it up, I'm gonna I'll say my wrap up for today's topic. Then you say yours, and then I want to play a little more of that song because I really like it. Um, yeah. But to wrap it up, scientific racism uh, is a testament to a couple things. Um, how it's a testament to how wrong somebody can be in their conclusion if they don't really follow the evidence. How the evidence itself can be polluted when you bring your own bias into it and how you have to recognize your own bias and how it would be good if we didn't pretend like we've solved it yet. And I don't know, whenever anybody goes, it seems like racism's over. I'm like, oh, you're cute. <laughs> so the best thing that we could do is one, understand, learn the history of what underpins um, systemic racism, what underpins some of the assumptions we bring to the table, because if you learn the history, we have an opportunity to fix it. If you don't learn the history, we will just continue to spin our wheels. So my thought is, first of all, and I guess to, in a neat little bow, uh, science itself can be brought awry, and that's why the scientific method being rigorous is key before you call anything science. Jeremy? We must, as a, as a, as a collective, learn that our, our preconceived notions are just that, notions. 
and we have to learn to get beyond our initial thoughts so that we can advance as a, an entire species. And if we can't do that, it's going to be a, a damn shame in another two or 300 years when we're not here anymore. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Um, my friend Jeremy Paul, very funny. Check out his comedy online. Honestly, check out his John Henry bit. It's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> it's hilarious. Very, and it's a nice, thoughtful bit. So, you know, and uh, he's also got some dirty comedy, so you can watch that too. Dirty comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I vacillate. I'll, I'll do something very heady, and then the, the next thing will be a BJ joke, and you're like, eh. <laughs> That's um, yeah, I will call that an episode. I feel good about that. I think we uh, covered some stuff that fairly thoughtfully, hopefully, and I hope you enjoyed it out there. And what I'd like to do. Uh, again, let me know if you like this song. I'd like to close. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna advance it, and just because I want to hear, I want Jeremy to hear how the song ends. So let me turn that up. Okay. 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 <laughs> Not what you expected, right? No, like that's that's like who's the choir? Yeah. It's like a whole different song at this point. Yeah. Like that's I I didn't realize they brought a choir in at the end. I know. It's 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 sick. I'm like it's you're paying a lot of people. I'm just like you put the money in and it was great. And it, it kind of sounds like it kind of sounds like they must have just recorded this in the tiniest room just because it's so yeah. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but it feels so close and all organic to me like they're all on one mic yeah yeah and then it does <laughs> there you go. i i love that part yeah i love that part good night everybody <laughs> <laughs>